In this week's episode of the Stock Scores Market Minutes, we're going to look at a recent winning trade and walk through the thinking about when to sell that trade. I'll, of course, do my regular weekly market analysis. We'll do a market scan in search of opportunity and look at the day trade of the week on MR. All right, so when do you sell a winning trade? It's one of the great challenges of trading because, of course, we want to maximize the profit on our winners, but knowing when to exit is difficult. We're never really going to exit at the highs, and we shouldn't try to. We have to let the trend ride as long as possible and ultimately exit the trade when the trend is broken. Now, I'm speaking about stocks that really are doing well, those that are in a strong upward trend. Stocks that are moving in that strong upward trend, they're often best sold when they break their upward trend lines after the formation of a falling top. Now, the steeper the upward trend, the quicker that that stock is going up, the shorter the time frame you should use to apply this rule. It makes a little more sense when we look at a real example. So here you have a stock that I featured here in the Market Minutes video back on, I believe, November 11th. So that was the day right there when I highlighted it. And the stock went for a great run, moving from, I don't know, around six and a half, seven dollars to over $15. So it was more than a double over a couple of weeks. But in the last three or four days, it's actually fallen back quite a bit. It essentially came up to this resistance level and it got stuck. And that's actually pretty normal to have that happen. Well, let's take a look at the 30 minute chart, or sorry, the 13 minute chart which shows how this breakdown happened and the things that I look for. So you can see that the stock was moving higher. Now again, this is a 13 minute chart. So this is a single day here. And so we've got multiple days and you can see that we have these trend lines and they're getting steeper and steeper. And we can see that the trend line was broken right here after the formation of a falling top. So here's a, a high that is lower than the previous high, which is lower than that previous high. So we've got falling tops building before the break of a trend line. So that right there is your exit point. Trend line broken from a falling top, and then look what happened. It went quickly lower. So using that exit signal got you out at about a double on this trade. All right, let's get into this week's market analysis with the look at the US markets. And the S&P 500 had a little bit of volatility this week, but when we look at the uh, weekly chart, it doesn't really show up because we ended up closing near the highs of the week and near the open of the week. And so we just simply have this long tail, which broke the weekly upward trend line during the week, at least the short term of that. There's the longer term one. So we broke it during the week, but we never closed below it. So we still don't have a sell signal. The buyers are still in, in control and therefore it is still a bullish trend. Looking at the 60 minute chart, you can see that uh, the market has bumped up against resistance. Here's that pullback that started Friday and then sort of started getting going Monday, Tuesday, but then by the end of the week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we started to move up again. We've come back to the highs where we've gotten stuck. I think we probably pull back near term. We've rallied back to the highs. Typically you'll get stuck there. So I think likely we'll see some weakness early next week, but it's very encouraging that after this little breakdown to start the week, we made it all back again by the end of the week. And that shows the power of trend lines and the support that they create. Looking at the Russell 2000, it also had a little bit of selling during the week, but it finished the week near the highs. And we still have that breakout from two weeks ago. I think this market likely to head higher. And so if you like to trade those smaller cap US stocks, this index shows that they are likely to do well in the near term. On to the Canadian markets. Here is a chart of the TSX, and you can see that we uh, have got a fair bit of volatility. We go up, we pull back, we go up. Now we're in that pullback again. I think we maybe pull back a little bit more, perhaps next week, but ultimately the trend is up. It's just gonna be a volatile one, which means you wanna buy weakness and sell strength in the Canadian market right now. TSX uh, short-term chart, you can see at the end of the week, we had that little break of the downward trend line. That's good, but we still got lots of resistance. And so I feel like this market near term is probably destined to kind of be stuck in this range. Looking at the TSX Venture, it's been a terrible market. We've talked about that many times, but it has fallen to some support and it's trying to hold that support. We're seeing some of these really 
oversold stocks, for example, in cannabis, starting to make a little bit of a bounce off of that support. But until we break the downward trend line, I wouldn't get too optimistic. On to currencies, US dollar in that long-term bullish upward trend. We are flirting with the trend line right now. You can see I've drawn that line and we're just kind of touching off of it. If we break this upward trend line, we will have formed a falling top and then break that upward trend line. And that's what I talked about at the top of this week's video. That is a sell signal. If we see a break of the trend line from a falling top, then I think that the US dollar is destined to go lower. Hasn't happened yet, just something to watch for. Onto the Canadian dollar, stuck in a sideways trading range. You can see it's got resistance here. It is building optimism, that's encouraging. But until we can break out through this resistance, I think this market is destined sideways. And if we break this upward trend line of support, then I think we may start to test some lower levels again. On to interest rates. TLT is the ETF that I like to look at. It's actually an ETN. And you can see that we are in this little flag pattern after a nice upward trend. We tried to break that flag, haven't done so. If we can break the up or this downward trend line, then maybe the bond market goes higher, which means interest rates go lower. But for now, it's kind of stuck in a quiet range. I think interest rates will be stable near term. On to commodities. Take a look at gold. It is still stuck in that drifting sideways range. And again, until it breaks out of that, I wouldn't get too excited. It's pretty boring lately. It tried to show a little bit of strength this week when the market was selling off at the start of the week. But by the end of the week, the market had gained back everything, which meant the gold stocks gave back the gains that they had made. And we're right back where we started the week. But the interesting chart this week is oil because I've talked about oil for a while, trying to break that downward trend line and it's done so. We've got a little rising bottom there. We've broken the downward trend line. Volume is a little light, so I'm not super enthusiastic about this, but I do think that oil is slowly starting that turn of the momentum as we've been in a downward trend for a number of months, but we've been building rising bottoms slowly and now we're starting to break those downward trend lines. So I think it's a good time to start to take a look at some of the really oversold energy stocks, uh, oil and gas, they are starting to turn around. They're generally the charts are ugly, but they're starting to improve. And so I think when you start to see these stocks breaking their downward trend lines, you should take notice. And finally, the fear chart. We had a little spike in fear to start the week, but it's right back where it started at the end of last week. And so fear, had a little bit of a blip, but we didn't really get very far with that. So relatively speaking, fear is low. So my ratings then bullish long-term on US stocks, neutral short-term, same for Canadian, although I do think the Canadian market looks worse than the US market. Gold neutral on both time frames, and oil neutral long-term still, bullish short-term. We're starting to see that break of the downward trend lines. I could almost put it bullish long-term, but I wanna see a little bit more strength, a little bit more volume come in. Stocks showed some weakness this past week, but they have not broken down yet. So this is just a buyer pause in that longer term upward trend. Now be cautious if the market indexes break down from a falling top. It could happen because we haven't actually hit the old highs just yet. Gold is sleepy, but oil is waking up. And so keep an eye on some of those oil stocks. Fear is low. All right, let's jump over to the stock scores market scan tool. And this week where we're going to run the abnormal breaks US scan. So I go into the market scan. Again, this is a member tool. If you are a member of Stock Scores, you can use this. If you want to learn more about being a member, go into the trader training area and there's some things in that area where you can learn all about it. Here we are in the market scan, just ran through the entire US and Canadian, or actually just the US stock market. And it found 67 stocks that on Friday made statistically significant abnormal price gains. That's one of the things I like to look for. And then I take a look at these longer term weekly charts to see if there are good patterns. So for example, precision drilling, breaking that little downward trend line after making a double bottom, volume a little light, but it's encouraging, especially given what's happening with the oil market. This may be a little bit of a bottom fish here. I think it's aggressive because it's still pretty early, but something to keep an eye on. And if you're a more aggressive trader, perhaps something to consider. As I go through these charts, I'm looking for certain patterns that I can teach you to look for. You can learn all about that in the trader training area of stock scores as well. And of course, we have a free weekly newsletter. Make sure you sign up for that. Here is MR, which was a good day trader on Friday. It was actually my top day trading pick on Friday. Made 
early in the day, and we'll talk about that in just a moment with the day trade of the week. But what's encouraging here is the downward trend line has been broken, and we're just starting to pick up from that rising bottom. I don't think it's an outstanding chart. I would give this a rating of six out of 10. It's good, it's not great. Let's see if we can find anything better. We won't go through all 67 charts because that gets a little bit long for this video, but of course, these are the things that you can do on your own if you learn how to look at charts and, uh, and have access to the tool. So uh, CLDR is a stock that I actually featured to my daily newsletter available at tradescores.com about two, two and a half weeks ago. And you can see that it's been breaking this downward trend line, just tickling through it. I liked it when it broke out from this rising bottom and that was why I featured it. had a good day on Friday up of just under 9%. I still think it's worth considering. I probably gets up into this resistance zone in around $14. That's where I would expect it to get stuck. So $14, $15, something to keep an eye on there. Moving along, we'll do just finish up this page and then I'll get to the day trade of the week. And so far, I don't see anything I love. I don't see anything I would rate as a seven out of 10 or better, um, but uh, there we go. All right, so let's take a look at the day trade of the week. And of course, this is always meant as a um, educational thing. It's not meant as you know something that you could do now because the trade has already passed. But let's take a look at that. Here we have MR, which was uh, one of the stocks we found in that market scan, but it was also a stock triggering my action candle on Friday at I think 9.42, 9.44 in the morning. And of course, we have algorithms that find these things automatically in real time. In this trade, uh, for $100 of risk, the position size was 1,660 shares, which is just under $9,400 in capital. But of course, you can margin that three to one when day trading, so it would require $3,150 of capital to do that trade. The gain for the day was what we call 9.1 RR, which means nine times the risk. Another way to say that is it's $900 of profit on that $3,150 of capital required for a 28.8% return on a one day hold. All right, well, that has been the stock scores, market minutes for, what is it? November, December 9th, 2019. Hope that you've enjoyed it. If so, please click on the like button, leave a comment, tell your friends, most importantly, trade well. Mm -hmm.